Good evening everyone. I welcome you all to Alankar, the distinguished lecture series at Avenues 2010, the annual international business festival of Shailesh Mehta School of Management, IIT Bombay. This year's Alankar was graced by the likes of Mr. Adi Godrej, Mr. S. Gurumurthy, Mr. Subroto Roy and Mr. Satish Chha. Today we have with us our very renowned guest Padmashri Kamal Hassan. An exemplary actor, director, producer and a winner of variety film awards as our speaker for Alankar. Thank you sir for gracing this occasion. On behalf of Shailesh Mehta School of Management, I request but I request Padmanabhan to present sir with a bouquet. Thank you Padmanabhan. And I request Govinda to present Ms. Mrs. Uh, Karuna Jain with a bouquet. Thank you, Govinda. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been given an impossible task of introducing a legend whose versatile career, overwhelming achievements, and awe-inspiring personality can make me continue speak for days together. On behalf of Shailesh Mehta School of Management, IIT Bombay, I, Divya Barangay, take immense pleasure to extend a warm welcome to Padmashri Kamal Hassan. Dr. Kamal Hassan recently completed 50 jubilee years in the Indian film industry. He has starred in more than 200 movies in all major Indian languages like Tamil, Telugu, Hindi, Malayalam, and Kannada. Dr. Kamal Hassan's trajectory in the Indian film industry exemplifies a prototypical journey. He started as a child artist, continued as a romantic hero, and evolved into one of the best actors that India has ever produced. Born on 7th November 1954 in Paramaguri in Tamil Nadu, Dr. Kamal Hassan's affinity towards excellence in performing arts was evident even as a child. He made his debut in 1960 when he was just 6 years old. He won the National Film Award for Best Child Artist, the first of his National Four Awards. He came back to films in 1972, and yet again, success was not far away. He won the Filmfare Best Actor Award for his role in the Malayalam movie Kanya Kumari. The awards and accolades became almost routine. with blockbuster tamil films that followed like apurva ragangal moonram pirai nayagan and tevar magan in 80s he starred in hindi films like ek dooje ke liye and sagar where the latter fetched him film fair award in 1989 we saw him in his only silent movie pushpak through his great acting skills he proved to the world that the feeling of love humor vengeance disappointment and sadness can be portrayed by mere expressions and body languages without uttering a word in the 90s we saw him in comic films like michael madana kamarajan sati leelavati and avai shanmukhi finally he also made his directorial debut in the rip tickling chachi 420 His most recent movie in 2008 was the extravagant Dashavataram in which he played 10 different roles. We've seen him as a writer, director, singer, lyricist, dancer and producer. It's not that he's just entered each and every facet in the field of cinema, but excelled in all of them. Dr. Kamal Hassan is the Dr. Kamal Hassan is the most decorated actor in terms of awards in the history of Indian cinema. He holds the record for the most film fair awards and national film awards for an actor which include four national film awards three awards for best actor and one for best child artist <laughs> Dr Kamal Hassan holds a record 19 film fair awards for performances ranging over five languages 
Without taking any more time, I now request Dr. Kamal Hassan to take the stage and enlighten us with his thoughts. It's all over again. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, professors, lecturers, gurus, namaste. Uh, I don't know the difference between a good lecture and a bad lecture, for I've never done that. I've just spoken to people. And all that I've learned has been extramural outside the walls of the ones, like the ones I see here. So uh, I've come here as I had gone to my eighth standard annual examination, unprepared. And uh, that was the reason I was a high school dropout. But here I see no such peril. I presume you're all good hosts. So if I fail, you'll still be nice to me. Uh, talking of my <laughs> learning, it's all been rag picking through the intellectual garbage that abounds in society. Not that I'm talking ill of my feeding ground, but uh, there are many professor friends of mine who say similar things about university education. But then for me, from the other side, it looks greener. So going back to the old adage, the grass is always greener on the septic tank. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now that I've said equally good words about you and me. Uh, we are all in the same soup. So uh, let's learn to swim as I have. And if you have any particular questions about strokes, let me tell you because I learned it all on my own. I envy you guys because you have it all on a platter. I would have liked to be here, but I didn't qualify. I was a bit slow. Uh, what would take you about four or five years has taken me 25 years. That's what happens when you don't have a agenda, an academician looking down on your, on your syllabus, looking at your syllabus, and probably looking down too. Some of my professor friends say they're very unhappy the way the country is being educated. It is definitely a change from the Mekello times where we were only creating clerks and babus for governmental use. We've come a long way from there. And uh, if, you th if you're wondering why I've not hit uh, the title I've been given, I told you I didn't come prepared. So I'm not going to use the cliche of hitting the title that's given to me. You ask me questions which is pertinent to what you think is the title. And we'll take it up from there because that's how I learned through questions. So this is going to be a learning experience for me. If you have questions, please do ask. I spare you lectures if you've heard enough. Thank you. Yes. Good evening, sir. I'm yeah. Gautam from first year. And uh, I'm very thankful that I'm in the same stage where you are, uh, at least in the same room. Uh, <laughs> So am I. Go ahead. It's not, <coughs> and it's like they say, uh, with great power comes great responsibility. And uh, you being uh, so old, uh, I mean, to your. <laughs> if I'm not, if I'm allowed to say that uh, by measuring your experience in such a young field, that is the Tamil industry, uh, what do you see as the responsibility that's been uh, bestowed on you, and how do you think you'll guide this? Uh, you, you, you've seen some of the Tamil films, Hindi even, Telugu. I'm a Tamilian. Tamilian, okay, let's start with where it hurts you. <laughs> you say, talk of responsibilities. You've seen the film. Do you think we are responsible people at all? Yes. You look at our films, we are irresponsible. That's, that's what comes through them. One or two guys raise a voice in between to make ourselves seem responsible. Yes, there is a responsibility. There is a civic responsibility as much as it is there for a pedestrian. Uh, it is there for an actor 
a filmmaker too, but we seem to have forgotten in pursuit of uh, uh, working for money banks. I know it is a management school and I must talk to you about compromises and how to manage. You don't have to compromise. You still can make money. I'm a standing proof. After seeing some of your movies, ranging from Appu Raja to Chachi Char Subis, and I thought that someday if I get opportunity, I will ask, and this day has come. I never thought of it. <laughs> Go ahead. And the question is, how in spite of uh, being immersed in this, in so many roles, which demands different sort of emotions, how an actor like you can remain in his authentic emotions and feelings? It's exactly like how sir, you lecture, you handle sane people like these and then man maintain your sanity too. <laughs> so, it, it's, and it's very, very simple. I, I, I think uh, the characters, though people believe I live in them, I don't. I rent them not the space is rented out. I just walk into them, live happily there, but not ever after. <laughs> I walk out. Yes, yes sir? sir. Sir, you said you've learned by swimming in the chance of toughness and all. You've had very varied experiences. Could you share any one experience that is very close to your heart, which you've learned, like you had to be really stern on what you wanted, and how? What did you learn from it, and how? What took you ahead? Okay, you took the simile of swimming, so first uh, advice, advice, survival advice, don't gulp, it's bad waters. So you paddle, keep your head out of water, but uh, don't go with the flow, because you don't know if there is a falls at the end of this flow. So try to reach the bank, and choose your bank, it's difficult. Then nothing is going to be easy. Eating and defecating is as difficult. Sorry, we are getting into the cesspool, so I'm getting into the mood and getting into the character. So what I'm, <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you is that what will happen? The worst is that you don't swim well, you'll drown, you die anyway. So give it that full throttle and reach out to the your chosen bank. Uh, that's the kind of spirit you have to, uh, you must have, some of you must have read the last lecture. One need not be on the verge of death to get that spurt. On the verge of life can give you equal amount of spurt like that. In my business, yes, at 21 I thought of killing myself because I thought I am a lonely genius in this world, bereft of it bereft of such uh, commodity called genius, but then uh, gravity is a good teacher. Sorts of, sort of, however big your wings are, it makes you land at one time or other. So I landed fortunately at around 23, 24, and I found a big crowd of similar people wanting to slit their wings, and they didn't. They are my friends even today. Not all of them are in films. Are in films. Some of them are teachers. Some of them are poets. A few of them are in the forest. The police are looking for them. <laughs> but they are idealists. They are what they thought they were. But they are not alone. That's what I realized, and that's the turn in my life. Thank you. Sir, uh, this is uh, Krishna Prasad from Chennai. Uh, needless to say, now I'm going to Mahabharam Rasi again. I have uh, uh, two questions for you. Uh, like India is a powerhouse of uh, talent. There is so much talent in this country. But uh, why do you think uh, we, are, we are not able to make the kind of movies that are made in Hollywood? Uh, my, this is my first question. Second question is, uh, uh, today, uh, in, in, uh, if you see Indian films, many of them are made purely with a commercial purpose. Like Just because a uh, call sheet of an actor is available, just because... Uh, you, you, need, you need to make masala movies uh, without, with complete disregard for uh, script or screenplay. People start uh, making movies. 
Uh, what's your take on this? Uh, and uh, do you think this is healthy for the Indian film industry? Do you think just masala is good for health? It can't be. It's just a ingredient, an additional flavor to the food. How can you forget food and feed the customer only with masala? It can't happen, and people will throw up. Will throw up new ideas. I know. I'd like to keep this less nauseous than it. It's getting to be. So uh, what I'm trying to tell you is uh, that instead of shouting down at my peers or looking down on them, I tell you what ails them. This country, you said, is full of talents, but it's also full of followers. What we need are, are leaders. And what we need to understand is we are the lawmakers. We don't have to look up at the parliament or at Delhi to make our laws. Our voice will become law. It has. Look at that Gujarati gentleman. I, I'm a great fan of this. I'm, uh, that's because I, uh, I'm thinking ahead of my times. I'm talking about Mr. Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi. That man is an important hero for me. Not because he's a Mahatma. I have already stripped him off the halo around his head. Uh, disrespectfully hoisted there by people with political uh, intent. I am a man and I look at him as my peer and I imagine what I would do if I were in his shoes today and that's what I'm doing within my chosen small spectrum called cinema. If you think I'm arrogating myself to be something as big as Mr. Gandhi, why not? Who knows, there are 20 Kamalasans and 10 Shivaji Ganesan sitting here and throw in a couple of Amitabh Bachans and Americans, we don't know. So why should you belittle yourself and look up at the dais? I like this arrangement of the dais. It's below you. <laughs> so uh, I came here you're going to face the same thing. You're going to work for money and churn out masala with total disregard to your civic duty. You will be manufacturing defective baby food and you'll be aware of it and you won't know when to stop it. There is a time and you'll know it. Prepare yourself. You want to sell out? You can. There are people to buy you out. But do you want to sell cheap? Or do you want to buy yourself a uh, new conscience. Well, it's uh, honesty is a luxury most can't afford. I have managed to eke out some money to be honest most of the time. And uh, I know I've deviated from cinema, but then how can cinema be any different from any of the chosen companies you're going to run? It, it's going to have a uh, the same problems that I am facing, the same content development is going to be lacking in many of the companies. Just because we wear suit and ties doesn't mean we have upgraded ourselves to the modern world. We still have to understand what tolerance is all about. We talk about it, but none of us are tolerant. So all these things, the society is the peer pressure. It's not your friend sitting beside you. The society in general, the older generation, younger, your son will become your peer and your pressure. And I have many such things in my films. Sometimes when a discerning audience asks me questions about, why did you do that? I mean, it's, uh, uh, it's a sort of cheap way of saying what you have to say. It's, it's unintelligent. Why do you do it? And when I say that uh, I have this uh, problem of reaching out to the masses, I'm lying. I'm just covering up for myself. It's because my money bag tells me I don't understand. He's stupid. He did not learn his trade, but he wants to be in this trade. That is the problem that every trade will be facing. The man with the money does not think that he has to educate himself or even know what he's dealing with. He says, money, Lakshmi alone will do. And since uh, Saraswati is Lakshmi's sister, she'll come along. I mean, anyway, I'll meet her for a festival. 
they hoodwink that particular area and that's why sir i suffer as you will and that's why sir i fight as you will thank you yes good evening sir oh i thought someone was dubbing for you <laughs> Yes 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 Sorry about that You yeah, because you've got too much testosterone to sound like that <laughs> <laughs> Yes yes lady okay, I'm extremely glad to be seeing you here today Thank you ma'am um, I have a couple finish here Ah uh, it's a long secret it's uh it's like how are you a successful man or how are you why are you a failure and when did you actually become an alcoholic or when did you learn to speak your mother tongue it's it's a long winded story you'll have to start from the first letter that mother taught you what i could succinctly tell you is that we did it before the times of cg so nothing was easy most of it was in camera and some of it was typical magician sleight of hand or in this case sleight of legs so <laughs> so that's how uh, it uh, it is and what you suspect we would have done we wouldn't have done it at the moment you suspect of it it would be done elsewhere that's a trick it's like showing this empty hand and quickly hiding the stuff with the right we it, it's it's very simple i'm very sure one of you guys here could sit and design another up it's very simple basically it what sometimes the best ideas are so simple that you don't have the guts to do them that's all sir dinesh sir uh we uh, she introduced you with so many awards uh, you accomplished so much but still uh, what is that driving force that keeps you moving like have you ever sat back and said that i have done it all and i have nothing else to prove what well, is that that won't happen i think with alzheimers i'll still remember <laughs> that i have something more to do so uh, i don't think i would ever feel that way because i started late as i told you those kind of satiation comes when you think you've already done something that's why i'm very scared of degrees because that gives you a sense of having completed something or acquired something that's untrue I want you to tr truly understand when you leave this college you're just starting out to learn and that's how I feel today and that's what is keeping me going and of course uh, uh, my bank balance also drives me to it that was what we I was hoping and all of us were hoping to listen from you thank you oh <laughs> then I'm such a no, that, expected that, that <laughs> expected will, answer giver that you will keep continuing in what you do best thank you thank you thank you I'm just kidding. Yeah. Hello, sir. Sir, here. Yes. Uh, sir, I am Prabhu. I am Prabhu from Som. Yeah. And uh, I am from Chennai. I am your fan from 1983, the year I was born. <laughs> okay. You didn't have to go into that. Yeah, you didn't okay. have to go into that. But anyway, that. Yeah. I have gone. three. I have three you, questions for you. I came to act when I was three years old. So, we are about three years apart. Okay. Tell me. <laughs> the first question is uh, of late uh, i've seen your mentor's interview mr balachandra k balachandra he told that uh, you once asked him to remake his earlier movie avargal mm -hmm. yeah so um, he was also he was telling that uh, you always think much ahead like 10 15 years so uh, the taking of film vikram which released in 1980s uh, i personally feel that that's way advanced during that part of time Okay. but do you do you think that uh, or do you have any idea of remaking your uh, your or any other movie in future no we uh, we don't remake it because it is advanced and nobody can be ahead of their time we can just be in time if at all but i don't think anyone could be ahead of one's time i think that's pompous too pompous a thought yeah you could be ahead of an uh, ill informed group but you can't be ahead of your time you you such a captive of your time so when mr balchandra says i think that i take it as a compliment and say thank you but then he shouldn't be here either because he should just about make his entry now 
he was about 15 20 years ahead and that, that's fine i think uh, that, that's a point of view thinking that you're ahead no i think both of us are not ahead of our time we're just about in time Hope, uh, hopefully and my second question is uh, some months back in ayrthil orvan's trailer release you told that uh, in tamil industry particular you need to do the planning more yes. the auditions etc so mm -hmm. that uh, you can finish off your shoot part very easily Gee. and uh, you also mentioned in that uh, function that you are planning to implement the same in your coming movie manmadan ambu uh, so have you practiced that in this movie yeah it, it doesn't need a drucker to say that <laughs> you need to plan your uh, movies i mean everybody has to plan uh, their thing even a trip to kolaba you have to plan if it's raining it's not raining going out to the mall to film everything is planned so why not a film i want my question is you uh, if you have a play in your school or i mean in your uh, business school or uh, anywhere for that matter you are willing to spend about a month to rehearse a play which will ultimately cost about 5 lakhs to put up at top level 10 maybe but for a film that costs about 20 crores or 15 crores or 40 crores you who's that star who can arrogate himself to say i'll come to the spot and i'll get the hang of it and hit the ball to the right corner i think that's stupidity ignorance and that's what i was trying to point out and that's what is happening in the industry i'm not making fun of just the tamil film industry look at bombay film industry even some of the hollywood stars think they can pull it off just because they her, had early life training in method acting and other things they after some time you become complacent that never happened to chaplin mccarthy had to throw him out of the country to stop him from working Uh, one final question sir this is on behalf of your uh, arkut official community <laughs> when can we see olaganaigan and isaignani's combo back oh any time we we are brothers so it's a question of the bunny bags wanting to thank you sir do thank that. you i am i'm i still continue to be mr l raja's fan and i'm uh, and he is my number one indian music director who's alive period Sir, this is Madhavan here. Sir, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, this is uh, in connection with the theme of the uh, avenues that is change, evolve, and sustain. Like being, uh, you have been in the industry for 50 years. So what kind of change have you seen in this industry over the years? In particular, in the Indian industry, like, and uh, like in the future, what kind of change are you expecting? See, there's nothing as permanent as change itself. That's permanent. You don't move towards change. You move with change, and it's happening every time. And to quote my uh, favorite man, M K G, is that don't ask for the change or shout or agitate for the change you want. Become the change you want. so when you evolve into the change sustaining is going to be easy if you are changing because something has changed you have to train yourself you have to learn to ride the bicycle suddenly one day and it's going to be difficult scrape knees off balance and stuff but if you evolve with the cycle know that it's going to come you won't even know when you learn to ride the thing that's how we learn to walk so the change look at our life itself when i asked you uh, the question of when do you do you remember when you learned your mother tongue that is evolving with the change and sustaining it we become faster and faster and faster and we think we have reached the limit and then you know there's somebody who speaks faster and more sense than you so it it's a constant process before alzheimers or any of the debilitating uh, stuff hits you i'm bored as much as you are <laughs> so i'll have to do something and when horses are bored they do something called wind sucking they keep moving their head back and forth i don't want to do something that stupid so 
I don't do wind sucking. I I I think of something sensible, the kind of film I would like to see. I put myself in your place and say, ah, that's a bad idea, come up with a better one. And that's what I do. And about experimentation, everything, the next step you take is an experiment. You don't know what kind of puddle you're going to land in. So that I, I don't believe in this word called experiment. It makes it too scientific. There's nothing. It's, it's, it's probing. It's, it's, and we are all so blind that we'll have to probe <laughs> as we walk. Uh, sir, uh, here. Yes. So uh, I'm Karthikeyan. Uh, I'm from Chennai. Uh, I'm a great fan of yours. Um, uh, f I'm going to ask the same question which Madhavan asked you in this film Anve Sivam and uh, uh, Asin asked you in Dasavadaram. Do you believe in God? No. Okay, okay but uh, you said uh, you were promoting uh, religion, uh, Christianity and you, um, you still uh, yeah, believe in I, I, I used to wear diapers. So are you blaming me for that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sir, uh, I have... Excuse me, sir. Uh, sir. I have something to show uh, show to you, uh, which was. Is it God? <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, oh, uh, This uh, is a poster me. which I made. Uh, <laughs> thank you, uh, Kamal Hasan. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, the lack of method is my inspiration. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. I, I'll tell you why. Because uh, I know there is a method to any kind of madness. But don't advertise it so much because you lose the spontaneity. I know there is a method to your management also. That's what you've been taught. But don't ever let it curb your spontaneity. Your learning is a skill. It has to be used. But it cannot be bereft of your sense. That's what you're special for. All that you learn here are your tools. Now, that's what I can say from my experience. So many, so many. So I can't say Zubulski. Do you know him? How many know him? So I promise myself I won't die like Zubulski. Zubulski is. And you can't ch call Chaplin a method actor. I'm a great fan of Buster Keaton. I'm a fan of Peter Sellers. And he's a formidable actor. You must see a film called Tea House and the August Moon by Brando. He plays a Japanese. Why would I not do so many accents in my films? I was trained by these actors for free. I, 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 I like Stanley Kubrick. He's no actor, but... He, sh he shaped the actor in me, the way he deals with his actors. I'm a great fan of Hitchcock. For him, actors are cattle. That's all he thinks of them. But doesn't matter. But what a great farm he has. <laughs> Beautiful farm, the best in the world. Like Mr. S.D. Berman is dead, R.D. Berman is dead, so I'm not bringing their names. But otherwise, he ranks in that. We, we should be happy that he's alive also. Good evening, sir. Uh, this is Rupin. Uh, it's an honor to share this space with you. Uh, you're lying in your own field. Uh, currently, I'm feeling a lot of vibes from you. Uh, being so close to you, uh, you are uh, having a lot of positive energy. Uh, this question relates to your childhood. I would like to ask something about that. Uh, whenever we speak of legends, uh, we see see that they uh, from their very uh, starting they show their inner uh, talent. We see Sachin Tendulkar he stands with a bat five when he was five years. We when when we see Michael Jackson he is dancing from twelve years old. So when today you are a great legend in your own field. Uh, so what uh, can you describe something about your childhood? Did you feel a kind of uh, something growing within you when you were ten years old, twelve years old? Oh yeah, my lung, heart, everything grew in size. And, yeah, but no, without uh, ridiculing your good intent, let me come to the uh, point. Um, uh, a 
but you have to, there was quite a list of questions there within that. So let, let me uh, uh, say what was that? That I heard, hated the word <laughs> legion because it makes it so untrue and uh, makes it sound like a yarn. <laughs> no, legions are made. A lot of stuff is added on to what actually <laughs> exists. So let me bring it down to ground zero and not the American one uh, to, to ground zero and uh, uh, take it up from there. What did I find in me as a child? A good family around me. That was important. And when I say a good family, I'm not talking about pious, uh, God-fearing. It, it didn't matter what they were. They were a good family. They were nurturing in nature. And fortunately, it also happened that I happened to be a very late child of my father. He was 50 when I was born. So that made me a grandchild. And my brothers became my fathers, actually. And my father was my grandfather. And that's why I make a film like Hiram, because I am stuck in a time warp. I understand 1940s and 50s better, because I've heard stories about it so much of it. So I'm able to look at today from that point of view, which gives me a vantage position to look at it. So if you're talking about what inspired me, it's a family. My sister uh, is a great classical dancer. So it, it was peer pressure that I had to do something equally good. My brother was, apart from being a lawyer, after finishing his law, he went to do his MA philosophy. It's a bit wonky in the head to do such a thing. But I liked it. He's my hero too. And my other brother went into business. He quit law and went into business totally. He's a businessman even today. He never one, one day went to the court except to collect his sanad, as I call it. And uh, that's it. And these are the kind of people uh, who peopled my life. And uh, they were all encouraging. And they were, it, it, it was a different kind of My eldest brother was an atheist. And a loudly proclaimed one. So was my uncle. And uh, my uncle uh, was a union leader. So you see where Anbe Shivam comes from. So Nala Shivam comes a bit of it from my life. This, this is what I know. It's, it's because of my village that I came from. Suddenly I was thrown into the urban situation, not when I was 20, but when I was 3. So it didn't, uh, sort of the culture shock was not there. It was another playground for me. So I graduated. What was a culture shock was not even America. Bombay was for me. I suddenly realized this side of the Vindhyas behaves, talks differently. And this side of Vindhyas is different. And I, my uh, respect for Mr. Gandhi grew multifold because he managed to unite this parochial, warring faction, probably 56 factions. I don't know how many were there. Uh, it's very difficult. If you want to know something about management, know about this man. <laughs> I have Puneet. a question. I'm Puni from School of Management. Uh, I'm not from Chennai, but I'm still a big fan of yours. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> My question to you is, in India today, on one side we have film stars who make uh, crores for even one movie. And on one side, we have people who struggle to earn even like two meals for a day. How do you think these film stars can bridge this divide? Or for that matter, the film industry can help bridge this divide? Like set up a film studio in a village or like, is that sort of thing possible? I think this is a bridge which will be work in progress for another 500 years. This bridge, the construction of this bridge is what conceived communism. Marx and Engels wrote Das Kapital with the hope of bridging this. The work is still in progress. It's not done. Some people are fighting with guns. Some people hide in the forest. Some people are bringing it in the form of democracy. I don't know how many of you, I'm, I'm in the front seat as I would know, but how many of you know about Gandhian Marxism? There was one stage, Mr. Ram Manohar Lohia wanted to sponsor that kind of much to the chagrin of uh, true-blooded communists. But this is a bridge which needs to be built. And 
That's what it's going to be. Not all of you in this room are going to be driving a Mercedes Benz, believe me. Some would do it because they are lazy. I mean, some would not be able to do it because they are lazy. Some because they think they are unlucky, but not have enough fight in them. And some, I can't even explain the theory of chaos at work. But doesn't matter. And some would have chosen to be without a Mercedes Benz. And those are the heroes I'm willing to salute today. Kamalasan. <laughs> Any day. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know it didn't fully answer, but that's the truth. A message? I started with that. I said I'm a high school robot. <laughs> yes? <laughs> <laughs> now we are getting very parochial here. Yeah, well, that's okay. Come. <laughs> okay. Even uh, Rajini and I get into that fight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's a healthy one. I hope you have a healthy fight. <laughs> similar alphabets, but look at the words, the, what they form. But only similar. We are not the same. There's a K. There's no J in me. You know, it goes like that. But uh, compare Brando and John Wayne. Uh, a picture, they say, is worth a thousand words. And we know books have changed society. Uh, do you feel, sir, that uh, pictures, cinema, has changed society? Pictures have changed society right from the time of caves, sir. Uh, the caves in uh, France are proof enough. The first hunt was very important for the series of other generations. The cro magnon man must have benefited from it. Or... We don't know. Uh, we don't know if the Homo erectus ever painted at all. Probably he did. So the pictures make a lot of impact, even before language. So we only made it more mobile, perfected. We added a little blur to it, and even in digital cinema, we still have to uh, add the blur to make it comfortable for you. And pictures are... Yes, but now the multimedia platform, the convergence of all the platform, is going to make this all look into one form. Pictures, words, it's going to be like a person. The media technology is going to become like a person. So you're not going to say, I met two pairs of eyes and a mouth and a friendly ear. You just say, I met so-and-so. I think technology will reach a, a position where you'll be able to say, I met an idea. I, I just saw an idea. Or I, I just experienced an idea. It's going to happen because I sincerely believe that entertainment tomorrow will dip into your own gray cells, not into ours. We will just be manipulators working with your gray cells, your memories, your colors, because ultimately the customer is right. So how right can we be in trying to manipulate it. So we leave it all into your head and start playing with your head. We already do. Something like Inception? Uh, yes, movie? could be. No, but this uh, much before uh, m Mr. Uh, uh, the director of the film uh, was making, decided to make films, I've been thinking of this idea. <laughs> so this is a pet idea of mine where you get into the minds, which is, I mean, I'm not talking in terms of dreams when... Uh, or just a hypothesis, but I think you can, uh, there are certain uh, researchers going on in neurotechnology where they are able to get into the mind, right now only with monkeys, but then it will also ha happen to homo sapiens soon. When that happens, our business will move, it can happen, it can happen at the rate with which we are jumping.
Yes, you're not tired. Hmm. Okay. Uh, well, I'm a masochist. I'd like to be an audience. <laughs> I would. I'd like to be a film critic so that I get to watch films for free. <laughs> I know I'm. I'm uh, such a single grooved <laughs> runner, but I like cinema. So there's no two ways. I'll be on the other end if not here. Can a person be successful and still maintain work-life balance? Uh, work and life balance? Yeah. Family. Yes. You have different roles with it family, society. It depends what you call family. There is a Tamil uh, thing if uh, other people will forgive me for lapsing into Tamil. It's called Yadum Ure Yavaram Kelir Thidum Nandrum Pirartaravara. Okay, now that I've said it in Tamil, I'll tell you where it came from. It came from Gujarat because it came from Jains. So they came into Tamil Nadu and brought this Naladiyar. This is, uh, this is from Kanyan Pungundran. And so uh, it is possible to maintain that balance. It depends on what you think is your family. And this says, Yadamure, every place is your town, hometown, and every person is family. When you think of that, way, then you won't be complaining like Mr. MKG's son, who thought he was a nasty father. But he was happy with his family. He was all the time with his family, because he thought of everybody as such. Why do you think I'm able to make such easy conversation? Because I don't think of you as audience. I think of you as persons. It's easier for me to communicate. If I have a paper and start speaking, I'll fumble. I'm talking to people, I don't. Yes, you can sit down and talk. I can sit. I've compromised very little. I don't say that compromise is out of the window. Because I come here, I'd like to fly myself, but I don't have wings, so I settle for jet airways. It's like that. You know, but there are compromises. I'd like to do things. Impractical, <clears throat> you'll have to settle for practical issues. And when I say that I've stood mo as a monolithic figure with no compromises, it's untrue. No, they need not be compromises, not all the way. But compromises, uh, you call it compromise or tolerance. I call it tolerance because you tolerate a certain stuff and move on with it. If you say compromise, it seems like you're giving away, I mean you're sagging. I don't even think of it as compromise. I would say incorporation or inclusive, to quote our PM. It's an inclusive club where you include some more person. It's, if you want to be an exclusive club, it becomes difficult. I'm not an exclusive club. I'm a club. I'm an inclusive club. And when I say I don't make compromises, I limit it. I limit the damage. It's like a bandage on a bleeding moon. I don't let it ble bleed for too long. Sir, in one of your films, you acted with Madhavan, actually. Some, I don't know the title of the film, but... Uh, <laughs> With Madhavan, you worked one film, Sam Satyame Sundaram. Ah, yeah, yeah, Telugu. Yeah, yeah, you're Telugu. talking about uh, yeah. Anbe Shivam in Telugu. Okay, okay, go ahead. That was not a success, not at all a success. Yes. Definitely not in Andhra Pradesh. No, no. Then, how do you relate? That means, how do you think why people didn't receive that film? Uh, it's not people. It's uh, the business community. Because if you see some of the films which are touted as successes, they're not. Like people till day say that Sakala Kalavalon is my biggest hit or Tunga Ditham. It's not. Apuro Sodhargal beat it hollow. And Dashavataram beat it ten times over. You understand? There are certain films that are touted. I, I, don't, say, I don't say that Anbe Shivam is successful. This is what is, uh, the Tamil film is called. But 
it's not true of all good films because Sagara Sangamam was a hit. Nobody can think of making a film like that. Swati Muthiyam was a hit. And it was far more advanced than even Anbeshivam. If you, if you ask me. I didn't write it. Somebody else did. Much to my envy, somebody else did. But I was happy and fortunate to be part of that film. So you want to know more about the failure? Uh, I want yeah. That means, uh, I, I, okay, I, it was good. The film was a good. I felt bad seeing that film, but uh, I felt finally it was good. I, I mean, I was sad to see my hero like that. You were uh, sad uh, to see the hero like that. But, but uh, there I, are I, many I, heroes like that. And that that's why, and I wanted you to feel sad. That was the purpose. So the purpose is achieved. Yeah. One more question. What is your next film? I mean, Man next Man film is Manmada Nambu. I don't know what they'll name it in Telugu because it's going to be. They say dubbed. it stopped and uh, producers are not coming forward to produce it like that. <laughs> what? What? I mean, uh, they say the film is stopped in the middle or something like that. No, no. What? I didn't hear you. No. Producers are uh, fearing to produce that film. I mean, it's a high budget film. Oh, the producer sobbed. Uh, Something. Okay. Oh, oh, he doesn't look like the sobbing kind. Uh, he can afford to lose a thousand crores and not bat an eyelid. <laughs> His name is Mr. Udaynidhi Stalin. Oh, sir. Change. I'll come to the subject now. Will happen with or without my assistance or yours for that matter. It will happen. It will evolve into a change. And nobody can hold uh, on to hegemony. I'm coming to the point. Nobody can hold on to hegemony or to uh, monopoly for too long. It'll probably they will stay a little longer than they deserve to, but it will all change. Sir. The real society, uh, yeah. No, I haven't. Uh, let me tell you about my, myself. I'm not bragging and it's not, I have never bought a black ticket in my life. I've never paid a TTR for my ticket. My tax balance is zero arrears. You'll never find my name in the list. I've paid all my taxes. And Bharati Yudu, and Bharati Yudu, that's why I'm so cocky, because they can't threaten me. They can't threaten me by confiscating my wealth. I have none. I've kept myself that way, because it's easy to travel without baggage. I'm like the Genghis Khan's army. Small pony, fast, very little to eat, and what I want to eat is below my saddle. I beg your pardon? You are the countermeasure. <laughs> Sir, don't ask me. I have told you who I am. Tell me who you are ten years from now. If you say something very similar to mine, come home for dinner. <laughs> sir. Hi, sir. I, I have a question here. I'll take you up later. Indian film industry is pretty fragmented in terms of production. When you, you quoted uh, you quoted Sorry. Hollywood you quoted Hollywood and all the major directors and producers. That's a little different structure of the industry is totally different. Big studios, big budgets, uh, willing to experiment. And you still have, besides big studios, independent filmmakers still experimenting with uh, difficult topics. Yeah. Do you see such an evolution happening in India in the next 10, 15 years? Because we, we essentially have 
uh, entrepreneurial bent towards uh, movie production and it's finance financiers or rich people who are able to fund the production as individuals or groups assess a corporate approach to this do you see something like that happening Works? Yeah. Do you hear me? Yeah, you do? Okay. See, uh, I'm quite happy about the corporate people coming in, but they are very much like the advertisers. So a true artist suffers under the advertisers because they have fixed notions of what they want to sell. Corporate people very few of them are actually educated in cinema. I'm not just swiping them off the table and saying that they're not qualified. There are some whom I've had the honor of meeting who knew about a business, but some didn't at all. Business management does not mean film business management. You have to apply these tools, but know the this craft and its specific nature and when that happens then they will get good managers, good producers. This whole film uh, thing is about logistics. So uh, to understand this logistics first you'll have to understand the medium and the art without which you cannot just ap apply uh, just uh, managerial I'm businessman with no grand visions, either in cinema or even in business, who fool around and fumble and do very little. The, 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 the state that cinema is in today is to be blamed on various factions. One of them is the audience itself. They don't react. They treat us like politicians. They think it's their it's written on the head that they see bad foods. So they accept it, like bad roads, bad politicians, bad medication, bad education, anything we accept. Like that, you don't have to accept it. Because if you insist, you know that customers are always right, and uh, they will right themselves in the process of pleasing you. But these things is going to, these are going to take time. And I promise myself that I will not be the impediment. When my friend asked me what's your solution for it, or what's the factor that could take away corruption from the country, it starts there. So I made it my responsibility to do my film. I have, I'm one of the very few, or probably the only producer who started scheduling a film and then backward scheduling it to meet a date. My film company was the first film company to digitize the script, divide it as page per minute as they do in Hollywood. It's not just wanting to do something fancy that's being done in Hollywood because I saw the logic of the system which beats our logistic debacles that we often meet. So you can bring down the film to page a minute and one-eighth of a page and how long it takes to make that one-eighth of a page and you can s track it with the, which is there in your but it's a different kind of tracking but same methodology but you'll have to understand a bit of the film and ultimately it's not about just making cars you made one car it's the same thing rolling out of the belt here it's going to be various ideas it's more closer to publishing so there has to be educated people literate people to run this. So cinema is a new form of literature. They have to be cinema literate people who are sitting there in the corporate offices to choose the right stuff. So when that happens, more good things will happen. Sir, sir, here. In a nation of God believers, do you feel uh, lonely being a rationalist? Because the irony is you yourself are worshipped as a God. So how do you deal yeah, with that? Yeah, that's one of the reasons I don't believe in it. So I, I truly don't believe in myself totally. People say, no, I believe in myself. Then why do you ask the doctor how long I have, have I got to live? Who's he? 
So there are certain factors that, uh, well, I don't feel lonely because there are many people like me. Yeah, even in, uh, I, I'm, I'm sure the, even in a concentration camp, the Jews were not lonely. They were scared perhaps, but never lonely. Yeah. Yes, sir? Two, two misnomers. I'm not a great person and there's no politics in India. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, hello? Yeah. Yeah, here. Yes. Okay. Hi. Uh, my name is Kamini. Uh, firstly, I'm not Tamilian. Okay. <laughs> no, that's uh, not a crime. No, no, it's okay. just a... <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, okay. Uh, I ask this question particularly because I'm trained in Bharatanatyam and I'm a Maharashtrian actually. Uh, I, if I given chance, I would dance whole my life, you know. Okay. Uh, one question I need to ask you is, if you don't find an audience, you mentioned in your speech right away at the age of I think 21, you just took out your gurus and said that if I'm not treated well or things like that, I don't want to be in this line. So is it something about that I have not found the audience or it's something like some, no, no. Or some other I, reason? I found the wrong critic, that's all. That angered me. But he was a very important man. He never danced ever in his life. Okay. But he always wrote about dance. So what I'm talking about is what qualifies you to be a, the nitpicker in something. You see, I can tell something about your dance because I've been there, done uh -huh. it. Uh -huh. But uh, some of the critics, like uh, when I say, let not the f film critics be upset. There was a critic called Peter Bagdanovich. When an actor like me or a director like me asked him, what do you know? You're a critic. What did you do? They, he make, became a filmmaker and became very successful. The same was asked of Godard and uh, Truffaut when they were writing for Cahiers du Cinema. And uh, some of the older filmmakers asked them and they brought in the new wave. They became the change. Chabrol, Clad Chabrol and uh, uh, Truffaut and Godard. So, uh, what were you, what was your question about Bharatanatyam? No, no, the thing was that like if did I as, did as I artist, not find an audience or no, what was? No, no, no. It is something like if I don't find an audience and if I still want to live as an artist, how do I really progress in today's society? Like if I well, don't find uh, an audience, can I do for myself? Well, let That's me thing. let me quote uh, or not quote actually uh, quote an example, Mr. Bharatiyar. He. Uh, Subramanya Bharati, as they call him, is one of the greatest poets uh, India has produced. And uh, unfortunately, he is also from Chennai, but that doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> but what I'm saying is that's all I know. It's a limited parochial mind, but forgive me. But uh, what, uh, unlike Mr. Tagore, who had all the facility, this man was scrounging for everyday living. None of his poetry found even light of day. He was a proofreader. That's how he made his living, not with his poetry. Nobody wanted to read his poetry. But he continued to be a poet. I can't ask you to be that, but better you find an audience. I did. Thank you. Hello, sir. So this is Arun Kehatik. I'm first year management student. Um, so I'm very happy to meet you in person on my birthday. <laughs> Oh, happy birthday. Many more happy returns of the day. Thank you for it. Sir, I want to sing a song in front of you. Yes. It is, it is from Tamil movie. Kindly bear with me. Ilamai idha idha Modumai idha idha Ilamai idha idha Mudu mai idha idha College teenage pengal Yellor kumun meed kangal Ila mai idha idha Mudu mai idha idha Thank you. It's a, it's a hooded compliment. I'm happy most of you don't know Tamil. Okay. <laughs> huh? I, I, I'm already in it. Don't worry. <laughs> huh? 
hundreds and hundreds more to go. <laughs> Romance does not pertaining to uh, uh, does not pertain to just two genders. It can go beyond genders, things. I think as you grow older, you'll understand the <laughs> fun and romance. Any time. So, so we got we're running out of time. Sorry, but go ahead. Hmm. Where are you from? Okay, go ahead. Uh, Trinavelli? Salem, okay. Hmm. Uh, Indian? What is it? Huh. Yeah, but see, no, 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 no. A man goes into a telephone booth to change clothes. You know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about Clark Kent, who's also called a Superman. So, uh, that's not a practical way to change dress, but you like it. And especially if there is already a lady in there making a call, that's a very wrong thing to do. <laughs> and uh, so this is a, a film, it's a pedestrian dream. Of uh, MGR has done it, Shivaji has done it, and it sells. I, I cook up this bad masala for your sake. but. It, you cannot approach society with uh, these kind of fancy ideas. Indian is a pre pedestrian dream. You tell me, you, you, you're an IIT, tell me how many people can make a rig like that. And when he has got enough faculty to make those kind of rigs, he's not going to be a terrorist. He's going to sell it to an American company and become a rich man. So, this is Rajesh from Second Year Management. So. Here. Yes. Yeah. yeah, actually, uh, I just read an article about you in the magazine and uh, it mentioned that uh, uh, one of your hobbies is practicing magic. I, I just wanted to know whether it's a media generated fact or. Uh, no, I'm, I'm a half baked magician. I didn't go into it. I have a lot of friends who are very good magicians. So if you see uh, Pushpak, you'll see certain things. It's not film trick. The mug stays to my hand and it keeps moving. That's all magic. That's in camera. It's not done. So those are the the person who's acting in that film is a magician friend of mine by name, Mr. Ramesh. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, hi. Um, I'm also an actor. That's why this question I really want to ask you. Uh, first of all, I want I want to thank Kamini for breaking this male uh, domination. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear a single female voice since I have come here. Uh, my question is, uh, whenever it, uh, a question is asked to an actor or a performer who is your inspiration, who is your role model, always there is a reference to a Hollywood, Bollywood, European, world cinema, actor, director, writer. So I'm just wondering, is this that uh, since uh, we are a huge country and with more than crore population, what is the we don't have uh, people or actors, great actors or writers or cinema makers as an inspiration. So why it is that? No, no, I have great in my whole thing. My, my s s sunrise was Mr. Sivaji Ganeshan. Okay. I didn't want to bring his name up because I did not mention Yusuf Saab doesn't mean he is not the best actor in the world. He is. Like uh, I'm talking about Dilip Kumar uh, Saab. I come every December to kneel before him and kiss his hand and say, my respect to Godfather. He is the big down of acting, even today. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. Um, due to paucity of time, I'm afraid we won't be able to entertain any more questions. Uh, thank you, sir, for being here and for that lively interactive session where you shared your experiences about your life. Thank you. <laughs> you want to thank somebody else? Like, I'm sure that this hall will definitely... No, no, go ahead. I, I can hear <laughs> I'm really afraid we are actually running out of time. Really sorry for that. No, I have a flight to catch. Okay, that will be my... Uh, one more question. Yeah. And that I'll, I'll answer a few more questions which are not asked.
Okay, that that's a dangerous uh, <laughs> question. He said, would you like to start a political party of your own? No, no, but yeah, but I have a bad throat, but you'll get Godbole, but I don't know about Lakshmi. <laughs> so, kya batao? Ish, I don't know what to say. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, I regret the 50 years. It could have been five. <laughs> because I took 50 years to learn what I could have learned in five. That's the difference between your institutions and fumbling around and finding management on your own. So, so that's it. I think uh, it was a pleasure meeting you all. I, I'll do my little thanks and then you can. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so I came here thanks to Padmanabhan. Uh, and his dad, who's a very close friend of mine. That's not the only reason I'm here. I wanted to take away something from here. I wanted to know what kind of people are going to see my film tomorrow. And I'm enlightened. I, my, uh, you gladden my heart that I am making films not for non-entities, but you really do exist. The intelligent audience are there. How improper, you're applauding yourself. <laughs> but doesn't matter, I would have done it anyway. Thank you very much, it's been a pleasure. This, this was a great pleasure, thank you. Uh, I request the audience to kindly be seated. So, uh, thank you, sir. I'm sure that this hall will definitely produce some more Kamal Hassans in the time to come. Uh, on behalf of uh, the faculty, staff, and students of Shailesh Shri Mehta School of Management, I request Padmanabhan to present, sir, with a memento. Uh, thank you, Padmanabhan. Now I request Paratosh to deliver a vote of thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, first and foremost, on behalf of Shailesh J. Mehta School of Management, I, Paritosh Chaube, would like to thank all our distinguished guests, the likes of Sri Kamal Hassan, Sahara Sri Subrato Roy, Mr. Adi Godrej, Mr. S. Gurumurthy, and Mr. Satish Jha, who have graced Avenues 2010 with their esteemed presence and made this event a huge success. I'd like to extend my sincerest thank to our HOD, Professor Karna Jain, our faculty coordinator, Professor Sonar, and the entire teaching and administrative fraternity of IIT Bombay, who've been nurturing and guiding us at every step, without which conducting avenues would have simply been a dream. A special thanks to all our sponsors and partners for the faith and enthusiasm they've shown towards avenues, which has been growing leaps and bounds every year, and has evolved into being one of the most coveted peace school events in India. Ladies and gentlemen, let me take this opportunity to thank the sponsorship team, the Alankar team, the design team, event teams, team logistics, our IT team and our public relations team for contributing their bit in the School of Management's premier event. Last but not the least, I'd like to thank my fellow teammates in no particular order, Aditya Shivastav, Arun Kadavil, Gaurav Chaukase and Sudhanshu Shekhar for giving in their best in every possible way. I hope all of you had a great time while we had a culmination of an exciting two days of the frenzied activities, stimulating debates and solemn contemplations by students, academia and industry. I hope to see you all next year, bigger and stronger. I hope our batch of 2012 is hearing this. In the words of William Shakespeare, I can no other answer make but thanks and thanks. Thank you. 
I request the audience to be please seated. Uh, I hope we were successful in fulfilling the promise of providing you with a melting pot of ideas, experiences, and above all, a tremendous learning experience. I would like to thank all our sponsors and partners for their support. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. See you next year, bigger and stronger, as Paritosh said. Uh, I request you be seated while the guests are escorted. Uh, I'd like to bring to the notice of the audience that we have a rip-tickling session from Kapil Sharma in a short while, so kindly be seated.